Good day, everybody. This is the first of our series of lectures about regarding the uh, muscle system, and uh, in this particular lesson, we're going to focus on uh, types of movements and uh, identification of some uh, you know, muscle interactions. And we're going to finish up with some easy clues here for uh, learning how to name muscles. With here, just some ordinary bo body movements that you not, might encounter. Uh, one is flexion. Okay, flexion would be any kind of movement here within the uh, sagittal plane that is going to decrease the joint angle, or in other words, bring two bones together. So if you're looking at this picture here, starting in anatomical position, which the R would be down like this, okay, and moving it forward, okay, that is flexion. You could also do the same thing if you're going at the elbow here and bringing the forearm up, that would be flexion. Or as is better shown right here in the knee, you're bringing these two bones closer together or you're decreasing the joint angle. Okay, the opposite of that is extension, which is increasing the joint angle. And extension, again, if you look from anatomical position, being right now like this, okay, anytime you're bringing your arm backwards, or you're straightening your leg, or you're straightening your elbow, you are extending the joint or making the two bones further apart, and therefore increasing the joint angle. Anytime you go beyond 180 degrees, uh, in my example right here, you're pushing your shoulder back, you know, that would be hyperextension. Hyper is a prefix which we use to imply uh, more or greater than. Now, rotation uh, could be shown here in your, uh, in your head and neck, uh, but it could also be done, you know, in your leg. But rotation is basically moving a bone, you know, along that longitudinal axis, okay? Uh, so basically, like you turn your head, you know, left to right, shaking your head no, that'd be an example of rotation. Uh, if you take your foot and turn your toes out, that would be lateral rotation. Medial rotation would be bringing your toes in. You could also do the same thing in your head here, okay? If you look out, okay, that would be lateral rotation. If you look from, from the side back to the front, that would be medial rotation. So basically, the middle here, or median plane, move your head towards it, medial rotation. Move your foot towards it, medial rotation as well. Move your foot away from it, lateral. Move your head away from it, be lateral rotation as well. Now, the next two types of movements here, you know, abduction. Uh, a good way to remember this might be to think about if, some, uh, if a child is kidnapped or we say they are abducted, they are taken away from, Abduction is moving your body away from, or, or body and limb, away from the midline. You are taking it away from the midline, whereas adduction is the opposite. You know, you think about the first three letters of uh, adduction, ADD, you are adding or bringing the limbs closer together. Okay, so ab, take away, like an, like an abduction of a child, or adduction, bringing things together, adding two points together. Now the third one here that we have on the slide is called circumduction, which is a very special type of movement. In this one, the is a combination of both flexion, extension, ab, and adduction. Uh, basically what you need to remember here is just that the proximal end of the joint, in this case your shoulder joint, is going to remain stationary while the distal end, this piece your fingers, move in a circle so that uh, if you were look at this in three dimensions, it would look like a cone. That might help you remember to cone, a cone for uh, circumduction. The next couple slides we're going to deal with some special movements. You know, they don't fit in the other, other categories. Uh, the first one we have here is opposition. Opposition involves taking your thumb and pressing against all four of your other fingers. Uh, this is allowed because of the special arrangement here of the thumb joint here. Uh, the saddle joints of the thumb here allow you to do this. Special to your forearm is supination and pronation. In supination, you know, you take, this is basically anatomical position, your palm is forward. You know, many people say that if you were going to try to hold a cup of soup in your hand, take a sip of it, that's like supination, you have to have your palm up. Pronation, opposite here, uh, thumb is going to be medial, you know, so your palm is going to be back. You know, so some people say like, uh, you know, you're thinking about, hey, do you want some soup? You put your palms up. Or no, push your palms down, push it away. No, I don't want any soup. So pronation, moving away, 
you know, basically moving your thumb hand back and uh, supination palm up. Now the other movements here of the feet, you know, first one involves inversion. Inversion is turning your sole towards the middle or medially. As you see in this picture here, it's basically inversion when somebody sprains an ankle because the ankles, the feet turn in. Uh, it can also be done here if you try to walk on the uh, lateral edge of your foot, the outside edge of your foot. Uh, inversion, or excuse me, eversion is the opposite. You're going to turn your sole medially, uh, basically trying to walk on the inside of your uh, foot, you know, across your, th across your big toe. Now, still in the ankle, you have some special terms here because of it from anatomical position. You know, anatomical position is, you know, this position right here with your, palm, your foot flat. If you are going to pull your toe up, like bring your toes towards your shin, this direction, that's dorsiflexion. You know, so basically if you stand on your heels, you know, that's dorsiflexion. The opposite, plantar flexion, would be pointing your toes or standing on tippy toe. All right, so from here, this would be like a gymnast or a ballerina, you know, going up on toe. This would be plantar flexion, this would be neutral, and this right here would be dorsiflexion. Now, no muscle works by itself. Uh, mo most of your body here are going to find muscles occur in pairs. Uh, the muscle that is responsible for the main movement that you're looking at is called the prime mover or agonist. Okay? It's the major muscle that's responsible for the most of the movement. So, if you're going to try to flex your, flex your elbow, you know, that would be the prime mover would be your biceps brachii. The big muscle that whose belly shows up there when you flex your muscle. Now with any prime mover, you're going to have a muscle that goes against it, opposes that action. That is the antagonist. So in the case of this here, if the biceps brachii flexes the joint, the triceps brachii, you know, reverses that action or straightens the joint out. Now a muscle called a, a, type, a type called a synergist is a muscle that's going to assist the prime mover in whatever action it is. For example, if you're going to flex your biceps, the biceps brachii is your main, mus main muscle that promotes movement when, you're, when your palm is in supination. So palm forward in anatomical position and flex your arm up, that is the biceps brachii. Now if you take your palm and turn it down, you know, so you're pronated and try to do the same motion, you know, you're going to be as, the, as another muscle on the brachialis muscle. This is going to become the prime mover, or it's going to be the majority of the action. It's still going to be the bicep muscle, but the, the, the brachialis muscle is going to be there to assist that movement. Uh, when your palm is in pronation, you know, the prime mover really doesn't get a good pull in the bones here to actually make it move. So you've got to, got to have a helper muscle. Now fixator muscles are those muscles that are going to stabilize the motions. So again, if you're trying to do a bicep curl, just flex your arm, You've got all kinds of muscles that are going to stabilize it. You know, it might be your deltoid, your pectoralis major, uh, your latissimus dorsi on the back. You got all these muscles that kind of help hold the joint in place, uh, preventing all other unnecessary movements. So you can isolate just on just flexing the arm. Now, as we start exploring names of muscles here, uh, I'm going to give you a few short tips here about how muscles are named and a few of the Latin work terms here that are going to be used to help you identify the muscles. Uh, this will give you hopefully some help here when you start to think about what the muscles do. You know, for example, some muscles are named by the direction the fibers run. You know, for example, uh, the rectus femoris. Uh, rectus means straight, you know, so rectus femoris is the straight muscle fibers of the uh, femoral area. Uh, the other term that we use many times is the relative size of the muscle. You know, is for example, if it's large, they might say maximus, like gluteus maximus, large muscle. Many muscles are named by their location. You know, for example, uh, named by the location, uh, named for the bones they lay on. Uh, for example, the temporalis muscle lies over the temporal bone. Some bones are identified by the number of origins. Now, an origin is the point of which the muscle has very little movement. It's basically the stationary point. Now, since all muscles have, all joints are going to move a little bit, you know, I've always told my students to remember that the origin is the less movable point than the insertion. 
The insertion is the main part that moves. So how many origins do you have? Okay, so the biceps, two heads, you have two origins. The triceps, three heads, you have three points of origin. Now, some are really complicated names here. Go by the location of the muscle's origin and insertion. You know, for example, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It attaches to the sternum, the mastoid process, and the clavicle, sternocleidomastoid. Some are named for the shape of the muscle. For example, deltoid. Uh, deltoid means triangular, and that big deltoid muscle on your shoulder has a triangular shape. Finally, we might uh, list them by the action of the muscle. Uh, for example, in, in our class, we're going to deal with most of the, just call the hands, muscles that move the fingers and hands, you know, flexors and extensors. So you might have a name like uh, extensor digitorum longus. Okay, basically a muscle that's going to extend your finger, and it's a long one compared to the others. Now all muscles are based, all these shapes, maximus, minimus, brevis, longus, these are all based relative to the muscles. So we don't have any definite length here as to what's going to call be called maximus or minimus. You know, it's just basically what the early autonomous here we're looking at and how they describe the muscles.